Hey, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. Thanks for joining me today. Now this video is going to be a little different. I am just going to be coloring today. I have made these coloring guides for the pumpkin spice panda stamp set from Whimsy Stamps. Um, pretty much going to be sharing how I color pandas and pumpkin things <laughs> like my pumpkin coffee and my pumpkin donut. Um, just my go-to colors for the stamp set and what I'll be referencing for anything in the future that's a panda or a pumpkin. So I'm just going to be sharing how I'm using my Spectrum Noir markers here. I have them in a little bucket just off camera. These are all the colors I'm going to be using and I have them referenced on each of these guides. And I'm just going to start with coloring my first one here, which is my favorite. It's my little panda with the pumpkin on its head. And I've stamped all three of them, and I'm just going to go through how I color. So I did speed this up two times. Um, I don't normally color it this fast. It's, so it's this video times two <laughs> is really how long it takes me to color. And I'm going to start with my darkest shade of each of my colors. So I'm going to go through all of the BGs. So I'm starting with BG9, like on my guide there. And I'm just sharing how I do the three different tones, two to three different tones for areas on my images. So if watching coloring is not your thing, you don't need any help or tips or want to listen to me talk, you are more than welcome to skip this video today. Um, I'm moving now to BG6. So BG is for brown grays. This is a warmer gray for the Spectrum Noir color range. It's my favorite for coloring in animals for black fur or I guess feathers or anything, you know, that would be considered black on an animal. Um, coloring with black on an image just doesn't show any of the dimension or light. I prefer using grays so that way we can add shadow still but you still get the illusion that it is a darker colored fur. And the reason why I like warmer grays for animals, I feel like it just gives them more of a, of a warmth, um, a life of vibrancy. So you could use ice grays if that's what you have. I mean, obviously you don't need to run out and buy more colors if you're building up your stash. Um, you can use ice grays. I don't know if I would go more of the blue grays. I think that's a little too um, bluish, <laughs> but um, I definitely like the brown grays when it comes to working with darker animals. So the last shade for my trio for my panda is going to be BG4. So the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I keep coloring the same images and I don't remember what I use to color. I can usually make a pretty good guess. Like I said earlier, I like brown grays for anything that is darker, um, like black or dark gray for an animal. But um, I do find that I'm thinking to myself when I'm coloring like what the heck did I use the last time I colored this or maybe I'm coloring a panda from a different brand or a different stamp set and so I just don't remember so um, I thought I would make these guides for myself so that way I can reference them um, real quick for the face and stomach of my panda it's supposed to be white so I'm using my lightest BG which is a BG2 and my cloak colorless blender just to blend the, blend them out so that way it's a little bit softer and it's not such a harsh line where I drew the color it's more of a shadow and then I'm going to move on to the brown stem I only have two shades I'm using GBs GB9 and GB7 for this and um, that's just going to be the stem for my little pumpkin and then for the leaves I'm going to use AGs 5, 3, and 2 to color that in I always start with the darkest and then use my midtone to blend that out and then the lightest to kind of finish it up. I have started with light and going to dark and back out again, but I found since I changed to a better paper, I've been using Express Blended Paper. I have that linked in my basic supplies list because it's what I use all the time now for my coloring. My aunt 
was the one who recommended it. She, um, for her alcohol marker coloring. So I, ever since I changed to this better paper, it's like night and day. My coloring is so much easier. I don't feel like I have to saturate the paper with the lightest color first. So that's why I have joined the club of using the darkest color and then my mid-tone and my lightest. So now that I'm onto the pumpkin, I'm using my BOs four, three, and two to color these in. I guess it's like a, a burnt orange, I think is what the BOs are for. Yeah, burnt orange. Um, so anyway, while I'm coloring my pumpkin, let me go back to what I was saying. So I been wanting to create these guides so that way I could go back and reference them and not be like, I really liked how I colored that in, you know, that pumpkin that one time. Did I use this shade? Did I use that shade? Did I mix my families? Like, what did I do? So these guides are for me to remember how I colored everything and just documenting the different markers. But I also wanted to share them in case there's anyone out there, especially my other fellow Spectrum Noir colorists. Um, I know a lot of people are Copic colors and I love Copics. I think they're great markers. They're just really expensive and there's so, so many of them that it's overwhelming. And um, I know a lot of people are very good about purchasing just what they need. And, um, you know, they don't have full set syndrome where I have full set syndrome. <laughs> I need, I, I need one of each, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, we won't talk about the ink pads and paper and stamp sets or anything like that. We're just going to talk about markers. Um, okay. I guess I finished this. Let me go back. So I added my cheeks, my tongue, everything looks really cute on this panda. So now I'm going to move on to my panda with it's pumpkin spice latte. So I'm going to color the panda the exact same way, my same shades of BGs, nine, six, and four. And then the same outline on the white is BG2 and my blender. And then his um, inside of his mouth is just like the previous panda, BG9 and BG6. There's no blending. I'm just coloring in the two different spots. And then the tongue is FS5 and the cheeks are FS4. And those are like the blush I call them flesh colored. They're like the blush and ivory and different kind of skin tone. Well, pale people, skin tone colors. Um, so I use my FS fives and fours for the cheeks on my animals, depending on how dark I've colored them in. I'm using all of the same shades of markers and colors from my first panda on this one as well. I'm going to be using the brown as the sleeve of my cup. The green is the cup. And of course my orange for the pumpkin on the cup. I am bringing in some MB colors for two and one, and I'm going to use that to color in the lid of my coffee cup. Okay. So making guides, I want like I said, I wanted to save these for myself. Um, I do also plan on sharing them. You can find them on my blog. I have pictures of them. You can use the links um, down below in my description. I also post them on my Instagram so you can save the post if you click that little banner on the bottom right underneath your photos when you're on the app. Um, you can save them to a collection. Uh, you can maybe, you know, start a coloring collection and, you know, add this to your lists of future ideas. Um, so there's two different ways you can do it. You can pin it as well. I have a picture on my blog that is easy to pin, um, for your Pinterest board. So lots of ways you can save this and use them for yourself. I plan on just keeping them in a little organizer on my desk, um, so I can pull them out and flip the room when I need to, but I made them aesthetically pleasing <laughs> to share with everyone, um, not just for myself. So anyway, that's why I've started this video and why I'm creating these guides. Um, I just really want to share what I know, which is part of the reason why I have a YouTube channel and post my creations on social media and my blog. So now that my panda is done, I think he's looking super cute. I'm going to move into the coffee cup. Um, so while I'm coloring this, I don't know if anyone else got the email from Starbucks that the holiday drinks come back tomorrow. I don't know if you guys 
Are you guys a Christmas Starbucks holiday drinker? Um, I really like pumpkin spice lattes, so I order them until they're gone, which hopefully is this month. I know Christmas cups are starting, but I do hope I can still continue to get um, PSLs until the end of the month. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I'm trying to not drink so much sugar, so or eat. <laughs> also eat. Consume. Um, so we'll see how many more I get this season, but I do enjoy getting them when um, we're getting coffee on the go. Let me know in the comments if you're a Starbucks holiday drinker and what your favorite is. I'd love to maybe try some new things this season. So um, usually it's just a peppermint mocha for me, but let me know what you get so I can try it um, once my pumpkin is gone. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to cover in this video is what kind of inks work really well with Spectrum Noir markers or any other alcohol markers. Um, I've tried a few different brands. I do find that Ink on 3 Blackout is probably my favorite that I've used for the black ink. Um, I do have to stamp everything twice, so I use my Misty. But that's just my personal preference to make sure that I have a nice, clean image that the lines look really crisp and everything looks really good. So I use alcohol or no, sorry, ink on three blackout for all of my stamping when I want a black outline. They also have fade out, which is really great if you like no line coloring. I'm still kind of working on those techniques so I didn't want to share that yet. Um, that definitely takes some patience and knowing how far to color in the lines and on the lines it's it's an interesting technique that I'm still trying to master myself so um, but my favorite brown ink to stamp with is from Lawn Fawn. I think it's called Crunchy Leaf. Um, let me look it up. Yes, Crunchy Leaf. Um, it's a really nice brown. I wish it was a little darker, I guess you could say, but it is a really nice color. I think it really softens images, especially for like the fall season. Like these three pandas, I think would have looked really nice in the brown ink, but because I want my panda to look like it has black fur, I used black ink. I just thought it would be a better overall look for the panda. But the brown inks are really nice um, at softening an image, especially for the fall. I mean, really all the seasons, but for the fall, it just looks really nice. Um, I haven't experimented with any other colors. I'd love to know in the comments what you use, if you use anything different than that. I mean, Lawn Fawn's Jet Black is really nice too, but I've just had much cleaner, less smudging um, with my Ink on 3. Okay, side note. So I listed GB7 twice as my mid-tone and my light tone because I went over this twice. The jump from 9 to 7, um, I don't have 8, <laughs> was just a little too much for me. So I did two good saturated coats of GB7. So that's why I have it listed twice on my guide. Um, and then I used the nib to go in and color inside the pumpkin, but I just did one layer of color for that. You could do two, but I felt like one was enough. Um, so that's the end of that panda. So I'm going to put all my markers back in my little container. I tend to just throw my markers off to the side when I'm coloring and I'm going to start my last panda. And this is my panda with a donut. And of course, this does not have to be pumpkin themed. It could be Christmas themed. I love that he has a little scarf. Maybe he has a, like, a little Christmas donut um, or Valentine's. You know, we can wear scarves any time of the year, I guess. Uh, but you can make this donut so many different colors. I've created a card coloring in my donut with pink frosting, but I thought since I'm sharing, you know, similar coloring groups for this set of color guides, I'm going to color it like it's a pumpkin um, donut. <laughs> so again, the same colors that I used for my last image, I have my BOs for my pumpkin frosting. I use the MBs for the actual donut itself. 
I used my AGs and my GBs to color in the sprinkles. My panda is the same, the BG family for the um, panda fur, the FSs for its tongue and little cheeks. And I also brought in the greens to color in the scarf. So very similar, but um, just changing where the colors are going on this image. So while I'm coloring my last panda here, I just want to talk a little bit also about the cards that I made with these three images. I'm not sharing how I put them together. I just recorded my coloring and then just created some cards while watching um, Hulu <laughs> without worrying about recording, just taking my time and having some fun. I wanted to create something simple that really highlighted my stamped images since I was focusing so much on the coloring. So I used my paper trimmer and just cut out triangles of different papers. So I used an orange cardstock. I used a kind of an olive green cardstock. I picked colors that I thought matched how I colored in my images. And the old olive cardstock that's green um, but the olive cardstock, I embossed it with Whimsy's sweater slimline embossing folder just to give it some texture. I also cut some triangles out of cardstock warehouse precious metals collection. I chose kind of the more rose gold bronze looking, um, it's like a darker red. I guess I wouldn't say it's rose gold. It's like a red color of their metallic cardstock and then I glued everything down to some craft cardstock except for my green sweater triangles which you'll see at the end here in a few minutes um, once I'm done coloring they are popped up so there is a little bit of dimension on my card I also glued everything down to a kind of a vanilla cardstock as a card base as well as a scalloped circle frame also from Whimsy Stamps I use to create like a center point on my card that my stamped images go inside of. I also took some ribbon from my stash. It's very, very old uh, orange and yellow ribbon and just tied some bows as well onto my card. I stamped the fall is in the air sentiment from the pumpkin spice panda stamp set and I stamped it in crushed olive distressed oxide onto that same vanilla cardstock. I just fussy cut around the sentiment and my scallop circle, my stamped image, and my sentiment are all popped up. So um, those are all popped up and my green triangles are popped up but everything else is glued down. But they're very basic cards. I feel like you can look at the picture and kind of figure it out. But if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. If you'd like me to do a video of how I put together my triangle backgrounds, let me know. I could do a quick video on that in the future as well. So I am almost done coloring in my pandas and you'll see the cards. I'd also love to know if there's any color combinations or a certain critter um, or object that you want some tips on coloring, let me know in the comments as well. I really like to try to do this monthly. It's kind of fun. And again, I'm really trying to build up my color guide. So I will come back again in December with a winter theme stamp set and color those images in. So let me know if you have any preference um, or if there's something that you really want to see, I would love to share it with you. So um, there's lots of things to comment about. <laughs> I need to know what your favorite holiday drink is. Um, what else did I ask about? Oh, your favorite ink pad for alcohol marker coloring. And then what do you want to see in December? If there's any color combos or a specific critter or animal or object or whatever, um, let me know because I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> so I am going to finish up with the sprinkles and the scarf. And that will be it for this panda. Once I'm done alcohol marker coloring, I'm also going to show how I add in highlights to my images. These are optional. I sometimes don't do it. I sometimes just leave my images as is colored. 
but if you like the highlighted look, there are two different ways to kind of achieve some highlights. There's a more subtle way where you can use a white color pencil um, or you can do a more bolder color using a white gel pen. So um, real quick, the reason why I made that weird hand movement, I accidentally grabbed my mid-tone instead of my darkest, so I just corrected that real quick. <laughs> now I'm coming back in with my mid-tone. Um, and I actually really like them together. I think that the bright white of the gel pen really complements the softer highlight of the white color pencil. So let me just finish coloring in my sprinkles and my scarf and you will see what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm really happy with how I've narrowed down these colors. I think the burnt orange looks really nice for the pumpkins and of course I love my brown grays for my panda. So Okay, so now I'm going to clean up everything. I'm putting my markers away. I'm searching for my my white pencil and, and pen. So here I am now going in with my white color pencil. And this is an oil-based pencil. It's just the one that I have in my stash. and I've had it for a few years now. So I can use my finger to kind of like rub off any excess. So if you see me kind of swipe my image, it's just because I'm trying to like diffuse the color out a little just using my finger which I don't know if that does anything or if it's just my imagination but that's what I'm doing and I'm adding in highlights where I think my light source would reflect now for these images I don't really have a light source that's going to be on my card so I'm just imagining it's like a it's in front of my image so I'm adding glow where it would like the most outer part of my critter so the edge of the face the edge of the ears you know maybe there's a pattern in the scarf so like the way the light hits the scarf there'll be some brighter spots and some shadows my pumpkin frosting is glossy so I'm adding a lot of white trying to make it look like it's kind of a wet frosting um, and then when I have a rounded object I try to do the edges so that way it just tries to give the illusion that things are more round. And then when I bring in my white gel pen, I always add little dots to the cheeks. That's just a personal preference. I just think it's really cute. And then I really accent, again, those same areas where I think the light is hitting. So if our light source is to the left and all your shadows are on the right, then you're gonna want your highlights a little more to the left. Unless you're just doing it to be cutesy. I mean, honestly, it's just coloring. It's just for fun, do whatever looks good for you but I know adding white gel pen can be intimidating for some folks so this is just how I look at it it's where I think light is hitting my object the most um because that's where I want to bring that highlight back in but of course the little cheeks they need those two little dots I think it just adds so much to to critters especially um so I'm just gonna finish up here I end up fussy cutting this out to cut inside of my donut. I just grabbed a hole punch and punched a hole in the center and then got my little mini scissors in there and I cut around the inside of my donut. Um, but you can use your scan and cut. I was just having fun, like I said, watching Hulu. So um, I just cut them out myself. So here are our three pandas. They're so cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you stuck with it and listened and watched my coloring I hope you learned something new make sure to also click that like button and if you're new here I hope you'll subscribe and come back use those links down below to get a copy of the guides either from my blog or on Instagram thank you again so much for watching I appreciate your time have a wonderful day <music>